Hello, welcome back to the channel and this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings. But today we're going to be counting down our top five Eric Lang games and after a number of requests Eric Lang has agreed to put down his protest banners just for a couple of seconds and join us today. Eric, thank you very much for giving up your valuable time away from your attempts to change the world by pushing cubes on lumps of cardboard. Yeah, we're going to have to make this a quick one, I'm afraid, mate, because I've got a mediocre board game to design. So yeah, cheers, Eric. Let's uh, crack on with this list. Bollocks. So number five on this list is a game that we did a review of a few years ago, and we actually really really disliked it but we've played it a number of times since and it's gradually very very slowly creeping up in our estimation it is chaos in the old world this is an area control game that set the ball rolling for other games that may or may not be on this list this game is set in the warhammer universe you can be taking control of one of the gods in the warhammer universe and you'll be vying for control of a map that is drawn on human flesh right there's two ways of winning this game you can get victory points for corrupting different regions on the board and each faction in the game is asymmetrical so you've got your own threat that you can use to advance a dial that is actually baked into the board right chaos in the old world feels a little bit dated it was the forerunner to other games but for all its faults this is still better than a lot of the other toss that eric lang has pushed out over the years so with that in mind it's only number five right yeah, sadly, this game's never going to be reprinted, which is a shame, because all my shitty games are going to stay in print forever. It's number four. On this very, very short list of games by Eric Lang, because let's be honest, he ain't really done that many good games, is he? But it's Marvel Dice Masters. It don't really matter which set of Marvel Dice Masters you pick up, because they're more or less the same, right? But they tried to rip off a consumer with this by releasing booster packs, where you didn't really know what heroes you're going to get and what dice you're going to get in the packs, right? So we didn't really go anywhere near that. We just bought a couple of the core sets. This is a two player game where you'll be facing off against each other using characters from the Marvel Comics universe. You'll have a pool of dice that you will roll to gain resources and then you'll be able to buy more dice and then send your characters out to beat up the other geezer. It's a bit like a typical pub brawl down the end of my road on a Saturday night. The rules are a little bit convoluted and it does come with some really horrible paper bags that you've got to put your dice in, right? And that's really, really nasty to give your opponent a good kick in, in the head. So yeah, it's Marvel Dice Masters, number four. Yeah, we're currently working on a Rodney Smith versus John De Rose expansion pack for this one, which should create a few fireworks in the ball gaming industry, you know what I mean? It's number three. On this list of our top five Eric Lang board games is Rising Sun. This is possibly the third iteration of Chaos in the Old World. There's a lot of stuff that's similar in this game to what was in that game. But essentially what you'll be doing, you'll be trying to take control of regions in feudal Japan. You'll be doing this by putting different units out on a board. There's a nice interesting mechanism in this where you will be making alliances in the tea party phase. So really this game works best with an odd number of players because you always got to have somebody sitting out. There's some really fantastic miniatures in this. The kick start a version of this adds some stellar components the game isn't that long and there's always something to do there's always cards available to get that will embellish your strategy and whilst it is not without its flaws it can be lopsided and very difficult to fashion a winning strategy because the game is so fluid and dynamic but yeah rising sun builds on what was presented to us in chaos in the old world and makes the game a bit better yeah we hired a cultural consultant for this one who turned out actually to be a kiwi farmer from australia so number two on this list of five Eric Lang games is Arcadia Quest. In this game, you'll take control of a band of characters represented by some wonderful chibi miniatures and you'll be working your way through a six-part campaign. You'll have different objectives to complete. You might have to go and retrieve something from the board, but the fun part of this is that there's always the objective where you can do over your opponents, right? The game is progressive in the sense that you can carry over cash and equipment from previous rounds into the new round. And if you're the winner of a previous game, you get a leg up, not that sort of leg up, you get a leg up in the next round. This game's very, very easy to play, very easy to teach, has got some fiddly rules to do with line of sight, but once you get them in your head, it's not a problem. But Arcadia Quest is charming, it's exciting, and I'll get to beat up my mother. 
Yeah, I thought we did really well dressing up the attack, move, move, attack mechanism with some really fancy miniatures. But we made a lot of money on Kickstarter, so fuck it. Number one on this list of the top five Eric Lang games is Blood Rage. This is a Viking themed game where you'll have a round of card drafting and then you'll use these cards to take over different regions. You'll be able to pillage these regions to get bonuses, building up your stats on different tracks that will allow you to take more actions. It might allow you to get more victory points if you win combat. Just like Rising Sun, there's some fantastic miniatures in this. There's monsters in this that you can put onto the board that will give you a massive boner on the board. I am a little bit concerned about the pillaging aspect of this because due to my North East England heritage, I do feel that Eric Lang has created an affront to my cultural heritage. But that being said, Blood Rage is still a fantastic fun game. It blends a lot of mechanisms from his previous games and other games that he's ripped off. But for sheer enjoyment, packed into a game that takes only an hour and a half. We do enjoy Blood Rage quite a bit. Yeah, I'm really sorry that I regard Conquistors more offensive than pillaging, but... I suppose that just makes me a hypocrite, doesn't it? So there you go, that's our top five Eric Lang games. Truth be told, we were sort of fishing around in a pond, mainly filled with crap. Do you agree with our list? If so, if not, leave a comment in that section down below. See you next time.